If you are really bad at mathematics and you don't know any math at all, then this is a really good book to get started with. If your math is okay and you're trying to improve your algebra, then this is a really good book to get started with. So this book is special to me because this is the book that I used to learn math. This is what started everything for me. I went to college, I didn't know anything. I wanted to get my PhD in computer science. I loved computers, I loved programming, and I wanted to do that. And I took this class because I was forced to take it. You know, here in the US, when you go to college, they make you take a test and then they have you take certain classes. You know, you've gotta take like an English class and you've gotta take a math class. Well, this was the math class they put me in, intermediate algebra. In actuality, they put me in a class that's before this, and I took like a combined class, so I took like, I guess it's pre-algebra and intermediate algebra. In any case, this is the book I used, and I read this book, I worked through this book, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually use this book to learn math. Before I forget, if you're not a subscriber to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you use Instagram and you're looking for more content, check out my Instagram, it's The Real Math Sorcerer, and I'll leave the link in the description to my Instagram so you can check it out. So the prereqs for this book are pretty much nothing. I mean, you're supposed to have a class on pre-algebra, so you're supposed to know like some really, really basic things, but most people, most people can actually start with this book. And so this is the instructions edition. So what that means is that this one actually has answers to all of the problems. Now that's not something you're going to get when you buy this online. You're gonna get answers to just the odd problems. That's fine. The actual copy that I used for my college class wasn't this one. It's actually a soft cover copy that's falling apart. And so I decided to use this better edition to make this video because this one's a hard cover and it's a little bit easier to handle. So how do you use this book to actually learn mathematics? So what I would do is I would just basically go through and read the examples. For example, let me just go here to like the beginning of a section, graphing basic functions. So for example, graph the function defined by g of x equals one over x. So I would just go through the example with a paper and pencil and then just work through it. Notice the layout of this book. It's very like open, like there's a lot of space, which makes it easier. It's not like cluttered with words. So if you're a beginner and you're not used to reading math books, I think this makes for like a really, really gentle introduction. Yeah, it's a really good book. So what you're gonna wanna do again is just basically work through everything really, really carefully, right? Take your time and then, and then you wanna try to do the exercises. So after you get through the section, look how many examples there are, 10 examples, that's ridiculous. Then you wanna start doing these exercises and you see here that I have answers in blue to a lot of the exercises. That's because this is the instructor's edition. So if you get the regular edition, you just have the odds in the back of the book, which is fine. I mean, it's obviously better to have this one, but it's no big deal. You get plenty of practice, honestly, with just the regular edition. And how many do you do? I would say just do as many as you can. Someone once told me that you know you're ready for a math test when the math is so easy, it's boring. So by boring, I mean that not like, oh, this sucks, I don't wanna do math, or I'm not really motivated. No, boring is like, you look at, you look at a math problem, like I can look at, let's just say, like for example, this problem here, I look at that and say, yeah, I know exactly how to do that, right? Subtract three, multiply by five, boom, game over, done. But, but, um, if you don't know that, right, if you don't know that, if you don't know how to do this, then you wanna sit down and you wanna work it out. So if you look at a problem and you, and you know how to approach it and you know you know how to solve it and you have no doubts in your mind that you can do the problem, then, then skip it. But if there's a little bit of doubt, even just a little bit, you know, if you're doing a problem and you feel like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know how to do it. I, I think I do, but I'm not sure. Do it, right? Do it. Clear that self-doubt, right? So that's what you want to do with this book, right? You want to read through it very carefully, work through everything very carefully, get to the exercises and clear that self-doubt for every problem, right? Now, just do as many as you can. So let me just talk about something else here. When you're looking at the problems here, like you see here how it has these first problems here, skip these if you want, right? Just jump into, jump into the bulk, jump into the bulk, because if you're planning on going to college, what's gonna happen is that when you go to college and you take a college level class, instructors who use these books, they're not dumb, right? So when they make the tests, they usually try to pick problems that you've practiced more. So they'll take problems from sections where you've covered more. So like stuff like this, um, let's just go to another section so I can show you what I mean. So here's 2.4, so 
yeah, for example, stuff like this, these are good test questions. Whenever there's like a bulk of exercises, those are the ones you wanna focus on. Of course, you can just do all of them. This is just advice I'm giving if you were planning to go to college or something like that. But yeah, this is a great book for self-study. Let's go ahead and, and look at the contents of this book. It covers a lot. So like this is, has a lot of information. So it starts with the basic algebra concepts and then linear equations in two variables and functions and then systems of linear equations polynomials. So this is stuff you'll see also like uh, in other math classes. So it's very, very useful. Rational expressions and rational equations, radicals and complex numbers, and then quadratic equations and functions, more equations and inequalities, exponential and logarithmic functions. This is the hardest thing. Um, this is really tough for people to learn when they're first starting. So don't feel bad if you don't get it. Conic sections. So this is something that, you know, I used to teach in pre-calculus. So it's like a pre-calc topic. And this is something I used to teach in a college algebra class, right? So things that are taught in different classes that are not intermediate are found in this book. So you get extra content uh, with this book, which I think makes it awesome. You also wanna develop a system. You wanna try to work at the same time every day with a book like this. So my recommendation to anyone who is trying to self-study math, maybe you're just trying to get back into it. Maybe you're 20 years old, maybe you're 30, maybe you're 50, maybe you're 60. It doesn't matter how old you are. Life is about balance, and if you want a good balance in your study routine, my advice is start small. 30 minutes a day is all you need with a book like this because the content of this book, it's not that advanced. You can do these problems pretty quickly. So if you just start with like a minimum of 30 minutes a day and you get yourself a little timer and you sit down and you work through it, you're gonna be a monster. Since I mentioned timer, I just realized I have my timer here in the same room that I'm filming, so check this out. This is my new timer, it's pretty cool. I like it, I'll leave a link in the description. It's the Yoon Boe timer. Yeah, you can use this to time your study sessions and it's pretty good. And I know it's hard, even though it's, it's basic math, it's still hard. I think a lot of people, they don't, they don't understand that. I remember when I took this class, there was a girl and she sat in front of me and we had this test we had to pass in order to continue to the second half of the class and she failed the test. And then one day she just said, oh, I didn't pass the test. And the next day she was gone and I never saw her again. That's it, you know, like that was it. She had to retake the class. It was really, really sad. So yeah, it's hard for everyone. And if you're in a situation where you're taking a class and you're struggling, I do think this book can help you, but it's not about just buying the book, right? You have to actually sit down and work through it. Again, 30 minutes a day, pick a quiet distraction-free zone, get a timer, put your cell phone away. I also struggle from the same things that everyone else struggles, right? It's hard to maintain focus sometimes. So one of the things I do is I put my cell phone away whenever I'm doing math. And I just focus on the mathematics, right? If you can do that, if you can give yourself 30 minutes of like solid study time with a book like this, you're gonna be awesome. Everyone wants to know what is the best book to start with, right? And it's really hard to decide that. I'm a really big fan of Blitzer's books. And I know some of the subscribers here have kind of echoed that sentiment. Um, they're big fans of the books by Blitzer, but there's also really good books by Sullivan. And this one by Miller, O'Neill and Hyde is an excellent book. There's so many good algebra books. This is just the one that I used, so it's a little bit personal. And yeah, it's kind of special, right? This is actually where I started. And the weirdest thing is I didn't even, I didn't even know anything about math. I never even thought about like studying math. You know, it wasn't anything that I thought about. And I think the lesson from that, if you're watching this video and you're still watching is no matter what you want to do in life, like let's say you want to be an engineer, let's say you want to be a doctor, or let's say you want to be like a filmmaker, whatever it is, right? Just keep an open mind. You never know when you're gonna find your passion. You never know when you're gonna find something that you really love and that just you're obsessed with. I'm getting goosebumps because I love math so much. What is this? Factoring a trinomial. What is this? Factor the trinomial by the trial and error method. Oh yeah, so the trial and error method, so this is something that this book helps you with, is super key. And this is one of the hardest things you learn and it's very important because when you take higher level math classes, you have to know how to factor and honestly, the factoring in this book is harder than most of the factoring you encounter in other math classes. So yeah, it really prepares you quite well. Anyways, I think this is a wonderful book. There's other really good books. I think if you don't have an algebra book and you're looking for one and you can get this one at a decent price, get it. I'll leave a link in the description um, to this book. I'll try to leave a couple links if I can find like maybe older copies. I'm pretty sure this is an older copy, you know, there's a newer one now, so, but yeah. It's a good way to learn mathematics and I collect math books. So the more math books you have, the better because you can just grab a book and start doing some math, right? I'll take a lot of times, a lot of people when they're 
trying to study and they're trying to learn something, they spend a lot of time overthinking and you don't want to do that. You want to just grab the book, sit down and go. Just do it. Remember that old Nike slogan, just do it. Sometimes that's what you have to do, right? Stop overthinking and act. Take action and become a math master. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck to you.